You know, one of the things that we're focused on in technology right now is the next evolution of the internet. And the internet up until this point has been really driven by uh, a very hard, hard drive on the Silicon Valley platform companies. And, you know, we believe firmly the next version of the internet is going to become much more human in terms of su serving humans uh, better content, better services that not just affect your online life or your, your mobile experience, but also your offline life. And, uh, you know, the internet is becoming something that, you know, started as a uh, small, very uh, focused group of people who started 20 years ago using it and has expanded globally to billions uh, of users. The internet itself has been built largely by a similar set of people, which tend to be male engineers, which we like. Uh, but the next version of the internet, I think, will start to expand into things like design and media and very useful services that will affect more parts of your life uh, than it has in the past. How do you feel about the Huffington Post and it's how it's going in the company when you feel like you might become profitable? Uh, so the Huffington Post was an acquisition we did a year and a half ago, and really it was based on the thesis of something I just described, which is as the Internet's expanding, there's an urbanization of usage on the Internet where uh, more people are using fewer, bigger properties. And we saw the global uh, information opportunity as a big area where people want trusted brands to get information. The Huffington Post was a very significant and growing property in the United States. And when we acquired it, we thought that it had global scale uh, potential. So since we acquired it, uh, we have launched it in multiple countries, including uh, multiple countries in Europe. We have more countries on our roadmap to launch in. And then we've also uh, really infused with Huffington Post with um, video. So we've launched the first, in, essentially, internet cable channel in the United States called Huffington Post Live, uh, which is doing 12 hours a day of live programming. And I see the Huffington Post as a globally scaled platform that will grow, you know, for a really, really long time to come. When's it going to be profitable? Uh, from the profitability standpoint, right now we've been growth investing uh, in it. Uh, the Huffington Post has had significant uh, progress both in terms of consumer usage and revenue uh, overall. So we would expect the Huffington Post to become, uh, you know, a profitable growth entity for us, uh, you know, probably within the next few years uh, overall. Although I would say if you strip out some of the international investing and video investing we're doing uh, as a business, it's a very healthy business right now. There's just areas that we're choosing to invest in, which I think are really very, very, you know, big future opportunities. Do you make enough money today to yeah, so we, uh, Huffington Post pays uh, a lot of people to produce uh, content, both uh, internally and uh, externally, and then we offer a blogging platform uh, for people who want to blog on the Huffington Post. And right now, uh, between Huffington Post and some of our other properties, we have roughly about 50,000 people that blog uh, for us as a business now, up from uh, a few thousand a few years ago. Uh, but we, you know, have probably been the single largest investor in uh, hiring journalists uh, between Huffington Post and Patch and some of our other properties. So we are big believers in journalism, big believers in paying journalists. Uh, we're also big believers in having platforms that can unlock uh, idea sharing and content from uh, many people. So that's why I think you've seen us both invest in journalism and invest in the content management systems to allow people to share ideas and, and information as a business. What about uh, TechCrunch? Um, are you um, planning to sell that? Uh, no, TechCrunch uh, and Engadget, so one of the areas we see as an opportunity, our, our overarching content strategy has been driven around uh, a premise we call 80-80-80, which is uh, uh, the 80% of things that uh, help people with uh, either information decisions or purchasing decisions. Uh, and the, the, the three areas are around content for women, content for influencers, uh, and content that's, that helps people do things locally. In the influencer bucket, TechCrunch is a property which we believe is a um, w one of the best technology properties in the world for information, and we believe it's in very early stages, early days. Uh, TechCrunch is a property and a brand that we want to expand globally uh, over time. We expanded, we did a conference in China last year. We have co more international conferences we'll do uh, this year. Uh, we have expanded the editorial staff at TechCrunch, and I think TechCrunch will be one of the properties that we invest in uh, as a business, so uh, there are no plans to sell TechCrunch. What about Crunchbase as a part of that? Could that become a separate entity? 
Uh, Crunchbase, uh, for those people who are not familiar with it, is an asset inside of uh, TechCrunch, which essentially uh, allows you to get a company index of all the companies in the technology and startup space overall. Uh, that alone is an asset that we will probably continue to invest in and fuel uh, overall, and uh, we may or may, not, may or may not take partners on that project, but I think that was one of the assets we were very interested in. We bought the company, and we are now very focused on scaling that asset. Can you give us an update on Patch? Yeah, so Patch uh, is a property in the United States where we're going into local communities as there's been um, a receding amount of information provided to local communities as uh, more traditional media has gotten disrupted. Uh, we have scaled Patch out where we go into towns. We digitize um, all the assets in the towns, uh, businesses, schools, religious institutions, uh, community organizations. We've hired uh, roughly a thousand journalists, put them into towns across the U.S., and the property has ba has been getting scaled for the last two years. It's gone from you know zero usage three years ago to we see about 17 million people use it in the United States uh, right now, and we've gone from zero revenue, and we've said we'll do you know upwards of close to 40 million dollars in revenue this year. So uh, patches on a pathway to be profitable by uh, Q4, the end of Q4 2013. Um, and we still believe that you know local community information is something that uh, people want. It's not going to change. When you wake up in the morning, you want to know what the weather is, what the news is, uh, and you want to deal with uh, businesses and, and services locally. So it's uh, we feel like it's it's been very successful in terms of scaling.